clocks went back in the UK recently, so it's officially winter. We Brits are a bit obsessed with the weather. It's either too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry. Here's a lovely film about weather forecasting for all you weather fanatics. The one thing we have plenty of in these islands is weather. It's the common factor that binds and bothers mankind. The weather respects neither natural nor artificial boundaries, and without it, we certainly couldn't live. In the British Isles, where most things are done in moderation, the sun does shine moderately from time to time. But weather forecasting has become of absorbing interest, particularly when one is on holiday. People have always had a yearning to know what's about to fall on them, rain, snow or sunshine. Should they venture out or stay at home? It wasn't until 1855 that weather forecasting became a science, and everything looked a lot brighter. At the meteorological headquarters in Bracknell, human knowledge and modern technology combine to produce an accurate forecast. Her Majesty the Queen comes to see for herself just how far weather science has progressed in the last 123 years. This is the terminus of a worldwide network. The key, of course, is data, information, reports that now flow in daily, hourly, even by the minute from every corner of the world. Bracknell's computer collects the vast wordage, fits it into a jigsaw pattern, and reduces it all to a readable graph. To feed the computer's appetite, facts about wind direction, atmospheric pressure, rainfall, temperatures, cloud coverage and types of cloud are radioed in hourly from a huge number of small and large climatological stations scattered throughout the continents. There are daily reports from weather ships, even balloons. The need to know about winds, temperatures and humidities in the upper air makes the weathermen dependent on this large hydrogen-filled balloon, which will be stable and steady in flight and relatively simple and cheap to operate. A radio sonde is fitted to collect and transmit the information. These weather balloons regularly reach heights of 27,000 meters, that's about 15 miles. Humbler, but no less important, are the beehive meteorological boxes. Many thousands of them are positioned throughout the world. The information is teleprinted off at once to Bracknell, where the observations are received and digested. To cope with thousands of similar reports, Bracknell's computer is ultra-modern and dizzily fast, and needs to be. To supply Bracknell's customers with a reliable and immediate forecast, speed is the essence. The report is on its way to the central forecasting room. All countries of the world cooperate in the preparation and exchange of weather information, making meteorology the most international of sciences. Involved are some 3,000 land stations, 4,700 merchant ships, 600 upper air stations, as well as many other receiving units. Numerous reports, vital to the forecast now about to be compiled, come also from aircraft in flight. At this point, human calculation takes over. The weatherman compares the data computer sheet with his own. Meticulously, the forecast sheets are penciled in. Satellite photography has enabled scientists, in effect, to take a grandstand seat up to a thousand miles above the Earth and observe what is happening on this beautiful planet of ours. Cloud formations over a vast area, the drift of storms, the highs or the lows that will spell out the weather for us in the days ahead, information that is vital, especially for farmers. When the work is finally completed, the chief forecaster makes a final check. To a forecaster, this news sheet is more important and dramatic than his morning newspaper. And the chief is satisfied. The forecast map carries highly important information to a variety of outlets eagerly awaiting the news it has to tell. Not only airlines and shipping companies and the armed forces, 
but industrialists, farmers, commerce, and the man in the street. We live in a brave new world that gives us weather information at the touch of a button. We'd love you to subscribe to the British Movie Tone channel for regular updates.